Okay, so I'm probably gonna... <laughs> Got it. Okay, so let me reiterate some of that. Hoping everybody will enjoy this whole class and will come away with a lot of really good meals that are prepped and some tips and tricks along the way. Um, I, I do this every week. You guys know I post, I share my pictures every week. So I'm trying to, I keep telling myself to just relax. There's nothing different about tonight. It's just that I'm videoing it and hoping to share. So this is a process that I've just kind of worked on. I do what works for me. Hopefully it will work for you. I'll explain why I kind of do things the way that I do them. Um, um, and if you have questions, I want you to try and like slip them in, watch, uh, kind of watch what's going on. We didn't have the recording going when we were talking about the fact that there, there's a workspace here that's being recorded as well. So you can watch and see as we cut and prep and dice and slice and all that fun stuff there. Uh, but we'll also be able to talk to the camera here and you can watch me kind of walking around the space and setting things up. So first and foremost, everybody, I want you to start your ovens to 350 degrees. Okay, we need to get those started so that we, we can start preheating um, because the first thing that we're going to do is, is start working in that oven there. So uh, I'm not sure if we can uh, cheers. I'm not sure if everyone else brought their drink. This is my kombucha. <laughs> so cheers. We are going to have a really fun night. I hope everyone enjoys this and we are just going to go ahead and dive in. So now that you've started your oven. Um, I want you to grab the ingredients. We are going to prep for the cheesecakes first. So that is going to be your cottage cheese, your eggs, your pro vanilla protein powder, your pumpkin, your vanilla, and your pumpkin spice. Okay. If you want to grab all of those ingredients and your blender cup, that's where we're going to start. Okay. So I'm just going to go ahead and start grabbing those things myself. Another tip that we talked about in the newsletter that I just wanted to remember uh, for those that uh, are watching, um, I recommended that everybody start with a, an empty dishwasher. Okay, empty dishwasher, empty garbage can. Okay, that really helps us to be able to kind of keep tidy as we go about uh, doing everything that we're going to do tonight. Um, Oh, we also need to grab our Splenda. So grab your Splenda or your sweetener. If you want to use a little bit of honey, you can use, use a little bit of honey, whatever's going to work best for you. Okay. So no. once everybody, oh, sorry. Sorry. So while you're, while you're doing that, if, if people want to get your attention, do you want to give them the ability to raise their hand? Or, uh, if or you, you guys to... just want to talk, <laughs> okay, <laughs> because yeah. I, I'm not really going to be staring at the screen much. I'm probably going to be, you know, busy focusing here. So if you want to grab my attention, just say, Hey, Jonica, or I have a question or, or, you know, just go ahead and dive right in. If, if that works best for you guys. Okay. I so I sure. that temperature the oven's supposed to be preheated to 350 <laughs> degrees. Okay. Thanks. Sorry. No, that's perfect. That's a great question. I might not have even actually said it. So you thank you. Ingredients so what we're one more time to grab. Yes. The cottage cheese, the eggs, the pumpkin pie spice, the vanilla extract, the protein powder, the vanilla protein powder, and the Splenda or the sweetener that, that you're, you're going to be using. Okay. So we are going to be measuring out two cups of cottage cheese. Okay. And we're going to put that into our blender cup. <laughs> Everybody's furiously trying to keep up. I love it. <laughs> oh, are they? <laughs> okay. So I'm, I'm okay. And I want you guys to know that every your, recipe. I'm spotlighting oh, your sorry. work area, just so you know. Thank you. Yeah. Every recipe I ever do, guys, is very, very forgiving, okay? That is the nature of what I consider to be a successful recipe. So I'm not weighing out these ingredients. It's not like super, super, super refined. Um, we're just looking to kind of like do approximately one, two cups of cottage cheese. So then we are going to add, I like to add my powders next so that they mix a little bit easier in the blender. So I'm going to add two big scoops. Um, of my vanilla protein powder, my whey vanilla protein powder. Okay. Two scoops of vanilla protein powder. Yeah. Okay. Then from there, we're going to add our uh, pumpkin pie spice and our sweetener. So I'm going to add one teaspoon of pumpkin pie spice. Yeah, and I'm not sure if you can notice that I'm putting stuff away as I go. That's a little trick to kind of keep your workspace clear. I only have what you see right here 
is pretty much all the prep space I have in my kitchen. Okay, I don't have a big kitchen. You can see behind me, there's little bits of counter space, but I like to clean as I go um, so that things stay nice and tidy. Oh, you also need to grab the pumpkin. Did I say the pumpkin? <laughs> Make sure you have the pumpkin. Okay, so I'm gonna add a quarter cup of sweetener. And that's the like Splenda kind that measures, it's quite fluffy and light. So if you're using something like Stevia, that is a much more dense product, you'll probably want to use a little bit less than that. I hear a question. Sorry, how much protein powder was it? I'm trying to catch up. Two scoops. <laughs> Two okay. scoops of protein powder. Okay. So next we're going to grab our pumpkin and we're going to add half a cup of pumpkin. Chrissy, are you okay? Is everybody okay in terms of like where we're at? Anybody really far behind? Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'll slow down. Where are you at, Alicia? I was going to get my sweetener and I was going to use honey. So now I'm thinking like, okay, how much honey do I use? Because I'm not using stevia. You know what? Throw a squeeze in there. And when we blend it all up, you're going to stick your finger in, you're going to taste it. If it's not sweet enough, you're going to put another squeeze in. Okay. okay. It's super forgiving. And it's also a lot of stuff is very personal. A lot of people don't really like a super sweet, whereas some people want it to be really, really sweet. Okay. So sweetener is to preference, always to preference. Okay. okay. So don't yep. feel like you can do it wrong. Everything can have your finger <laughs> or a little spoon to go ahead and taste it. Okay. So we're going to add a teaspoon of vanilla to that where we're at and we're going to add our two eggs okay okay one of the little tips that i'm going to share with you when i have an empty container because my garbage isn't located right beside me i actually will save i have my cottage cheese container here you can see so i will keep that on the counter for a little while and that'll hold all of the garbage that comes from like my cracked eggs or uh, anything else that we might have as we go along if i have some stems you know, from radishes or carrots or whatever. So uh, the lid, the foil from the other cottage cheese. So I'll kind of save that on my counter so I can just toss it away easily. Okay, oh, so does everybody? Was it a half cup of pumpkin? I'm sorry, I have to open my yep. can. So, okay. Half a Thank cup you. of pumpkin. Sorry. Yeah. Okay, I'm just gonna I'm give you a quick quick review of the, the, the ingredients that have gone into our, our cup here. Okay, so we have two cups of cottage cheese. We have two scoops of protein powder. We have a quarter cup of sweetener, uh, which was the Splenda is the one that I had used. So sweetener to, to taste. We have one teaspoon of vanilla. We have one teaspoon of pumpkin pie spice. We have half a cup of pumpkin puree and we have two eggs. Do we have any questions still? Everybody's good to that point. Awesome. So would okay. a cup of pumpkin be way too much? A cup of pumpkin would be a lot. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I <assume> I <laughs> <laughs> scoops them out. <laughs> you know, I guess it's going to be a little extra pumpkin-y. It might be a little extra pumpkin. You know what? It actually <laughs> might make it a little bit more moist. So go ahead and try it. Scoop a little bit out if you want. Throw it into down the drain in the sink. But just roll with it. Okay? We're just, yep. we're just going to roll with things. Okay. Okay, so I'm gonna, this is gonna probably get a little bit noisy. I am gonna put mine on and I'm, we're gonna blend that until it's smooth, okay? We wanna make sure that everything gets nice and smooth together. So while that's going, is anybody really far behind? Anybody lost? Okay, so this is what mine kind of looks like. Probably gonna brush it down or push it down, maybe do one more little blend, but this is kind of the consistency. It's kind of the consistency of like cake batter. Can you guys see that or pancake batter? Okay, that's what, that's what it should look like. So make sure that's good and blended to the consistency of pancake batter. And then we're gonna grab our little, our baking, uh, containers for this. Yep. 
I grabbed a big pie plate. Is that going to be okay if I do it all at once and then cut it? Like this Sorry. thing? I have uh, like a glass pie plate because I don't have a lot of individual containers. Is it okay to do it in that and then cut it yes. up? Yes. Okay. Yes. You are just going to have to adjust your baking time to reflect that. Okay. And I'll tell you how to test because everybody's ovens are going to cook at a slightly different temperature. Mm -hmm. We're all probably going to have to, to cook for a little bit of a different time frame. Okay. So I'm throwing my blender lid into my dishwasher, getting that out of the way. I'm going to grab my containers to my baking sheet pans, whatever you are going to use. Okay. And you're also going to need some cooking spray, okay, to, to grease these. Laura's all over it already. What are you using there, Jonica? Are those disposable? These are disposable ones. I've started sharing these at the gym that I work at with people. <laughs> so I bought some little disposable uh disposable cups and I divide I'm dividing this one into eight okay it can be divided into less number or you can cook it all as one but like I said you're going to have to adjust your your time your bake time to reflect that okay so I'm just going to spray each of these dishes down so I'm curious about the contents if you're using a single pie plate how high should you fill it um that's a good question. It does rise. I don't think it will spill over. Maybe put it on a baking sheet just to be to be sure. Um, what's what shape is your single pan that you're using? You had a, a circular pie plate. So I, I don't know. Mine rose quite a bit. So I'm I'm gonna say mine rose, mine were individual uh containers, and it rose probably a half inch to three quarters of an inch. Yeah. So you probably wouldn't want to fill it like right to the top. Yeah. To allow a little bit of expansion. How's everybody coming? Looks okay, like so it. just try to divide it evenly amongst your, your dishes if you have multiples. Got to do our toast. Maybe when you get that in the oven. There we go. We'll toast after we kind of get everything <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> to a certain to a certain stage. That'll be our slight celebration. Are we gonna need the blender for anything else? No, it's going into the dishwasher, okay. getting it out of the way. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, toss it out of the way. Okay. Is everybody ready to throw those into their oven? Okay, I'm going to put mine in and I'm going to set my timer. Remember, mine are just divided into eight individual containers. So it's going to take a little bit less time to cook. Mine is going to, I'm going to set my timer for 20 minutes and then I'm going to check it after 20 minutes. Okay. Uh, what we're looking for in the consistency after these have baked, we'll talk about it again when I check them, um, is you want, you want the center to be a little bit jiggly, but not watery. Does that make sense? You don't want it to be complete watery gush in the center, but you don't want it to be dry in the center either, okay? You want it to kind of be gelatinous and kind of like, it kind of jiggles when you shake it, but it's not like super watery, okay? So we'll address that again when we check on those. How's everybody feeling? Are we ready to move on to our next? Getting a lot of thumbs up. Okay, so next we're gonna work on our egg bites. Okay, those are gonna go into our oven at the same temperature. Okay, so when I when I suggested the ingredients for the egg bites, um, I kind of just chose what was quick and easy. Sometimes that's the easiest when it comes to meal prep, so there's not too much chopping, but really, honestly, anything that you love in your omelets are things that go great in these egg bites. Okay, so I've done things like, kale. I've done bacon bits. I do roasted red peppers. I've done onions. I've done cheese. Um, I've done a lot of different things. Anything that you would put mushrooms I've done. Um, anything that you would put into an omelet that you enjoy in an omelet can go into these in small quantities. Okay. So what I had suggested, I believe was 
uh, asking you to get the bacon bits, okay? I've also used ham in them, but bacon bits are a little bit, where am I going here? A little bit more flavorful um, and a little bit easier because we don't have to chop them, okay? So you're basically just gonna take them out and you are going to, to put them in. I also said that if you wanted, it was optional for you to have some chives, okay? Little dried, freeze-dried chopped chives. I keep those in my spice rack and those are easy just to uh, to throw in. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna spray our muffin tins. We're gonna spray that with our non-stick non -stick spray. And then we are going to fill the muffin tins with each of the ingredients before we put the eggs in. Okay, I find that that's the easiest way. You know, when you put your eggs in first and you're like, did I put cheese in that one or did I put cheese in that one? And you don't know how much there is. So when you fill them up with the ingredients first, you can make sure that there's kind of an evenly divided amount in, in each of the muffin tins. Okay, so we're just gonna quickly coat with that cooking spray, those muffin tins. And then I'm gonna start with my bacon bits, okay? And again, these are the real bacon. They're not those like little simulated bake, bacon things. I don't know if those would work, but those that's just not really what I use. So, and quantities are going to be dependent on a lot of things. If you are looking to do this as a way of prepping and, and keeping your calories low, we're gonna use just a little bit of, of the, the, the heavier, more calorie dense things like this bacon in here. So. At one tablespoon of bacon is only 25 calories, so you could add as much as you want in each, but I'm using it basically just for that smoky flavor. I want these to be a relatively low-cal option for me, and since I usually eat them two at a time, I look to kind of keep the, the bacon to, to a minimum. So then I'm going to take some of my chives, and I'm going to sprinkle some of my chives in each of those uh, containers Hopefully you guys can see what's going on here. Okay, I'm gonna put those back. Okay, and then I'm gonna grab my one of my cutting boards. Can you guys, I'm gonna to try to keep my work area clean so you can see what's going on here. Okay, and I'm gonna open that jar of uh, roasted red peppers that I told you to get. Okay, here's tip number one. This is a professional tip. <laughs> I worked with my uh, sister's boyfriend, who's a professional chef and a caterer, and he told me, "Have you ever put a cutting board on a on a on your counter and it just kind of wants to like float around? You're trying to cut on it and it's moving. If you take a paper towel and you wet it a little bit, throw that underneath." Your, your cutting board instantly all of a sudden has some grip on your counter. So it won't be sliding around while you're trying to cut. So there's your first tip of the day. Um, we're gonna take some of these. I don't know if you guys got chopped roasted red peppers. Mine always come whole. Okay, so I'm gonna scoop a couple of those out of my jar. And I'm gonna go ahead and just like roughly dice those up, okay? I love the roasted red peppers because the flavor, you could do fresh red peppers and just dice them up, but the roasted red peppers are so much more flavorful and sweet um, that I just love what they add to these little egg bites. Okay, and again, I'm just gonna distribute a little, little dropping of each into each cup, making sure to kind of evenly disperse them amongst all of your cups. How's everybody doing? Moving along. I'm just waiting for my husband to get here to open the red peppers because I'm not strong enough. Okay. Oh, you you want to know a secret for that as well? What? Take the take the heavy end of like a, a knife or a utensil and bang oh, yeah. around the lids, okay, as you rotate it, and then it should twist right off. It's not just me. Or just get or just get your strong husband <laughs> to feel good about opening. <laughs> The jar for you. Here, like she said, in the jar. Warm water helps too. Oh man. Okay, so then I'm, I I also want to throw a, a little bit of kale into mine. And I found this lovely kale that's already comes washed and chopped. And so I actually can just pull little bits out of the bag and just drop them right in. Okay. I love 
having some color. I like thinking about the color of things that are going to be in these egg bites. Okay. So I have a little bit of red. I have the bacon. I have the little bright green from the kale. Um, and I just feel like they're, they're going to look as yummy as they are actually going to taste. Um, I know that that sounds really silly and maybe, um, maybe frivolous, but I think it's really important to remember that we're going to all the trouble of prepping these meals for the week. You want to actually look at these things later in the week and be like, yeah, like I want to eat that. Like we eat with our eyes first. And so if things actually look appealing, um, we're, we're more likely to be drawn to actually go back and, and enjoy them later. So don't underestimate the importance of, of making the things that we're, we're pre prepping here to actually look good and desirable for us to eat. So one of the things that I like to add is a, I'm, I'm going back to that cottage cheese that I had. You guys, I'm forgetting which camera I'm looking at. Um, and I'm actually just going to put probably like half a teaspoon just for a little bit of a cheesy flavor, uh, kind of adds a little bit of moistness to these, these egg bites. Um, and again, it's completely optional for you. If calories are not something that you're concerned about, you could just go ahead and do some shredded mozzarella or some cheddar in here. Um, you could throw some feta in if you wanted. Um, just whatever it is that you're trying to track. For me, I'm trying to keep the calories in check. So I'm just going to keep it with a little bit of cottage cheese. Okay, so I'm going to throw those ingredients back into the fridge that we're not using anymore. Um, and I'm going to grab a bowl. Okay, a little bowl to mix some eggs. So I'm making 12 egg bites here. Can you guys see in the camera there? I'm making 12. And my little trick, again, to kind of keep calories in check is I want to use half and half whole eggs and half egg whites. Okay, you can do these egg bites with a whole egg in each cup. You can do them with all egg whites in each cup, or you can do a mixture of whatever it is that you'd like. Okay. For me, I like the yellow of the egg. Um, I like the yolk, but I, I don't think I want a full egg in each of my cups. So I am going to do six eggs into my bowl. And then I'm going to whisk those up. And of course, I have an eggshell in one of mine. I there we go. <laughs> you do too? <laughs> okay, so the way that I'm going to make sure, again, I'm looking for consistency in um, kind of the calories. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix those six eggs, full eggs, until they're all beat together. And then I'm going to divide those amongst my 12 cups. And then I will top it off with egg whites. So that's the way that I kind of make sure that there's approximately half an egg in each. And this is where I don't know how many of you have a weird obsession with saving the scoops from your protein powders <laughs> that I have so many of, I don't know what I'm going to do anymore. I'm going to use that <laughs> to scoop my eggs <laughs> out of my, out of my bowl. Okay. So these are my, uh, my uh, whisked eggs and I'm just going to divide those amongst my, my muffin tins here. Where's everybody at? Are we, are we following along with this one? Am I going too fast? Are there any questions? I'm whisking eggs. <laughs> perfect. Perfect. Sorry. Perfect. Okay. Okay. So, Chrissy, you okay? Not an exact. Everybody doing okay? He's on mute. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm doing okay. I only had one muffin tin container. So I'm just taking notes and I'm going to do this a little bit later. Awesome. Oh, okay. That's totally fine. You can also make just, just a couple of like it. That's why. Okay. What someone was messaging me earlier asking about quantities. Um, and the reason I didn't include in quantities in the grocery list was because I wasn't sure 
how many people everyone was going to be prepping for. I wasn't sure if you were prepping for you and a spouse. I wasn't sure if you were prepping for your whole family or if you were prepping just for yourself, if you wanted to just try a little bit of things. So most of these recipes can be adjusted for quantities, depending on what your specific needs are. Not everybody wants to prep 12 egg bites. Maybe they don't feel like they'll eat those in a week. Um, Maybe they're only going to eat one at a time. And so they only need six for that entire week. Um, this is really, really customizable, I'm hoping. Uh, so hopefully the fact that there weren't quantities didn't really throw you. I was hoping that it would allow for some flexibility in how you want to use that. Okay. So once your muffin tins are all filled up, I love to throw a little ground cracked pepper on the top of mine. And if you're into it, I'm also gonna throw a little hot sauce. Do you guys like hot sauce on your eggs? I prefer to just kind of bake it right in. It saves me on the morning of, I'll just pull these out, throw them in the microwave and throw them in a wrap and run out the door usually. So, oh, do I have hot sauce? Maybe I won't be adding hot sauce today. <laughs> okay, hot sauce is on the list. <laughs> Ground grass pepper for just for today. Okay, so that's what my egg bites look like. They're ready to go into the oven. Is everybody else ready to throw them into the oven? They go ready. in at the same temperature as the cheesecake. Okay, so we're just going to open the oven and throw those in. And we'll check on those when we check on our cheesecake. I can smell my cheesecake already starting to cook. How's everybody doing? Okay, so I'm gonna take this opportunity to clear my workspace. I'm gonna load those dishes. I wiped my um, my cutting board down and my knife. So I'm gonna be able to use those again. Everything else is going into the dishwasher, okay? Hey, when you get them in the oven, give me a little shout out, okay? I wanna know where everybody's at. Rin. Hey. Alicia's in. Ready. Got everything in the <laughs> oven. We got them in. Perfect. I'm good. Perfect, perfect. Good. Okay. So now what we're going to do is we, while those are baking, we are going to make our marinade. Okay. And I gave you the option <laughs> of. Um, how long are you putting the egg bites in the oven? How many minutes? Yeah. We are going to, we're going to check on those when we check on our, they're actually pretty forgiving. Okay. We're going to check on those as we check on our cheesecakes. Okay. Is that 10 um, minutes? Well, probably about 10 to 15 minutes at All least. Right. Okay. okay. So we'll, we'll check back in on those. Thank um, you. Of course. That's a great question. Okay. So let me grab my recipe. Okay. So we're going to make our marinade in our mat, in our, our, our plastic bag here. And then we're going to add our meat to it, okay? So for the marinade, we're gonna need the honey, we're gonna need the soy sauce, we're gonna need the sriracha, we're gonna need some water, garlic, and then some sesame oil and some, ses and some sesame seeds and chives are optional, okay? So if you want to grab those ingredients, we're getting the honey, the soy sauce and the sriracha, okay? We're getting the garlic, the sesame seeds. Oh, I need to get some sesame seeds from down below. We also need the sesame oil. Hmm. There it is. Okay. And if you want to grab a tablespoon measure, we're going to be using, or a, a, a tablespoon an actual tablespoon is fine as well. I think I have more sesame seeds here. Okay. So again, this is really forgiving. If you like it more spicy or less spicy, feel free to adjust as needed. Okay. So I'm just going to open up my Ziploc bag so that I can pour my ingredients right into it. And we're going to start with two tablespoons of honey. Okay. That one's pretty empty. And again, this is just approximate, okay? I'm not gonna worry about scraping everything out of the tablespoon before I go ahead and measure the second one, okay? Okay, so we're gonna two tablespoons of honey. We're gonna do two tablespoons of soy sauce or three tablespoons, sorry.
Okay, we're gonna do two tablespoons of sriracha. If you don't like it very spicy, you might wanna cut down on some of the sriracha. If you like it hot hotter, you can be generous with that, okay? Okay. Then we're gonna add three tablespoons of water. Okay, I'm just gonna throw a couple of pinches of my dried chives in, okay. Sorry, did you say two, oh, sorry, sorry, two tablespoons of water? Or how much water? Three tablespoons. Okay, thanks. Yeah. Then we're gonna add one tablespoon of sesame oil. going to throw a generous sprinkle of sesame seeds in there. And then I am going to grab, I don't know if you guys like to dice your garlic or what you what you like to do with that. I'm going to take two cloves of garlic. Um, and I actually like to microplane mine. So I'm going to microplane those into the bag. You're welcome to dice. Or if you have already pre-chopped garlic, you can buy pre-chopped garlic that you just keep in the fridge. You're welcome to just put a, a, a table, probably about a teaspoon of that into your marinade, okay? Everybody coming along with that one? Okay, it, to peel your garlic, we're gonna smack it with the flat side of your, your kitchen knife. Okay, to get kind of the papery bits off. And then I like to use the stem to kind of hang on to as I do my microplane. That makes sense. Hey, how's everybody doing with those ingredients? Are they all in yet? Okay, so the easiest way that I find is just to zip that bag up, kind of squeeze the air out of it. And then we're just going to kind of mash everything together. Okay, that's just the easiest way to kind of mix all of those things to get that water to kind of thin down the honey, get all those flavors mixed up. Okay. So that is that. Okay, so my timer is going, so I'm gonna check on those little cheesecakes that I threw into the oven and have a look and see how they're doing. Uh, I think I'm gonna give them about two more minutes, okay? Might need a couple more minutes. They're a little bit watery looking. Okay. Everybody got their marinade mixed? Because next I'm going to take that salmon, okay? I'm gonna take that salmon and cube it up, okay? I like to think about like about one inch cubes. Oh, it has. Mm 
Did anybody decide to do chicken instead of salmon? I have chicken. Gorgeous. I have, have chicken. chicken. Were we doing okay. something else with chicken too? Uh, the, well, the chicken can be used in this recipe. Okay. About how much? About how many pounds of meat are you using? Um, it really, it's it's really easy and flexible. Okay, I'm actually, I didn't realize this had skin on it, <laughs> so I'm going to use my chicken as well. <laughs> I'm going to save that and deal with that off camera <laughs> because the skin is going to be a little bit challenging for me to get off. So let me see how much chicken I have here. Chicken, how much do I have? I have about a kilogram. I don't know how many pounds that is, guys. Sorry. <laughs> it's about four breasts, okay? Four large breasts is what I'm going to throw in here. And again, with my chicken, I'm going to cube that, okay? So this marinade actually is really yummy with, I've done it with chicken. I've done it with salmon. And I've also done it with shrimp, okay? It really is yummy with any of those. Are we making um, anything else really with well. the meat, with the chicken? No. Okay. Right. No, I the chicken works for this. <laughs> no, just go ahead. Okay. And I'm just like coarsely chopping this into approximate, approximate sizes, thinking about an inch each. And we're I'm just going to throw those. Bag. Yeah, we're throwing those into the bag as we go. Okay. Is it okay if you have salmon with skin on? Or is that going to cause a problem? It is okay. I just don't really, I, if I'm going to have salmon uh, with skin on it, I like to kind of sear it. And I wasn't planning on searing this in a pan because I want my skin to be crispy. I don't, I don't really like it when it gets soggy. Okay. So if it, but that's just personal preference. Skin is completely fine. Okay, I'm just gonna keep dicing. Okay, guys, at this point, after using your raw meat, it's very important that we change out our cutting board and our knife and we wash our hands and wipe our, our, our space down really clean. Okay, we don't want any raw, raw things coming in contact with any of the vegetable prep that we're going to be doing after this. Okay, so please wipe down, make sure that you clean up and put those grab a fresh knife, grab a fresh cutting board so that nobody's going to be getting food poisoning. Okay. And give those hands a good wash. Okay, is anybody else got their cheesecake timer going? Mine are coming out. I'm gonna show you in the camera here what they look like. Okay, this is what they look like. They're still a little soft in the center, but they're you can see that they're set. Okay, can, can everybody see that? Yep. Okay, they're, they're soft and spongy, but they're not jiggly and watery. Okay, I don't want them to be watery. Okay, so what I'm gonna do with these, it's nice and cold here right now. And these need to get completely cooled before we even want to think about eating them. Okay, so I'm actually going to set these outside on the, the side tray of my barbecue, just outside the, the door here, uh, so that they'll cool nice and quickly outside there. You're welcome to, to set yours anywhere that they'll cool, but that just makes them cool faster for me. Your camera? Yeah. Oh, great. Not like anyone's watching anybody except her. How many are there? Okay, how, how's the marinade coming? We're gonna zip that bag up and we're just gonna kind of make sure all of that meat is tossed in that marinade. 
And then we're just going to set this to the side, okay? I don't have bags, so I'm just using a bowl. I hope that's okay. Yeah, a bo oh, sorry. A bowl is, is perfectly fine as well, okay? So we're just going to set that over to the side. I'm going to throw it into the fridge. And then I'm going to check on those egg bites. Has anybody else checked on their egg bites? Yeah, they need a few more minutes. They need a couple more minutes? Mine did. Okay, I'm going to check on mine as well and see. Yeah, mine are still super watery as well. Okay, I'm going to let those continue to go. Okay, is everybody ready to move on to our next step? I'm all, almost, one more minute. I'm just cutting chicken. Okay. Oh, last piece. Okay. It was too much chicken. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's no such thing. I know, two and a half pounds. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what am I doing? That's next. Okay. Everybody ready to move on? Yes. Okay, so what right now what we're gonna do is we're gonna start cooking our quinoa. Okay. Um now, depending on what quinoa you have, you're gonna probably need to refer to the directions on the side of your, some people's quinoa, sometimes quinoa is cooked like pasta, where you boil it in the water and then drain the water off. And sometimes it's cooked more like rice, where you measure out specific amounts and the quinoa just absorbs all of the liquid, okay? So have a look. I did not include quantities because again, here's, here's the caveat with the quinoa. Okay, if you are looking, again, to keep your calories really low, these salmon bite bowls that I would put together will probably be mostly on a lettuce or kale base with a little bit of quinoa. Okay, if you are looking to have a more hearty bowl, you're going to want to do a base of quinoa. So that means you're going to need to cook a lot more quinoa um, so that you can fill each of your containers with mostly quinoa. Mine are probably going to fill, be filled mostly with kale with a little like half quarter cup of, of quinoa on the side with the, all of the other toppings. So based off of that, decide how much quinoa you want to cook. Quinoa is a wonderful thing. If you cook too much, it goes great in the fridge to be thrown in an egg scramble, to be thrown on top of any other salads, to be eaten in a lot of different ways. So don't be afraid to overcook your quinoa. Um, it's, it's, very, it's very easy to use up if you just want to store it in the fridge. So I'm probably going to cook, uh, it, I'm going to put four cups of water in mine and cook like three, it's like one, and well, two and a half cups of quinoa dry, okay? So my directions say to bring two cups of water or four cups of water to a boil and then add my quinoa into it. I also like to flavor my quinoa by adding a little bit of my uh, chicken bouillon into this. So because I'm using four cups of water, I'll probably use about four teaspoons of my, my powdered chicken bouillon. Does that make sense? That wasn't confusing to anyone. Okay, so I'm just gonna put that on the stove to start boiling. I'm gonna throw my bouillon in that and then I'll add my quinoa to cook after that comes to a boil. And kind of like rice, I don't know about you guys, when it comes to cooking quinoa, use a, a pot that you think is way bigger than you're gonna need because it's such a pain when it boils over, makes a mess of your stove. So make be generous in the size pot that you choose to cook up however much quinoa you're thinking you're gonna need. Did you put anything else in besides the bouillon? 
No, I just like okay. it to have just a little bit of that flavor. So okay. that's kind of my go-to with it. Okay. I just rotated my egg bites because my oven is not very good and doesn't cook very evenly. So I rotated them around to make sure they could get cooked. Hey, does everybody have their water on to boil or their, their, their quinoa taking care of itself? How are we doing with that? I'm going to start grabbing for the next. What are we making next? Next, we're going to be making those oats. Okay. So I'm going to turn the ingredients to the camera. That probably, probably should have been something that I did the first time. So we're going to need our oats. We're going to need our chocolate protein powder. We're going to need our bananas, depending on how much banana you want. And again, bananas are optional. I know some people aren't a fan of bananas. Um, we're going to have our chia seeds and we're going to also have our espresso powder. Okay. And then I like to make them in Mason jars. I think these are probably about a cup and a half, two cup size. Can you, um, say those again? I ended up with oats all over my kitchen floor. Oh, shoot. <laughs> yes, of course. Okay. I have them here on the, on the camera as okay. well. So I have my oats. Thank you. I have my chocolate protein powder. These are my chia seeds. I have my bananas and then I have my espresso powder as well. Thank you. Okay. And again, okay, this is another recipe that's customizable. I want my oats to be, um, when we have a lot of protein in the things that we eat, it helps to kind of slow down the digestion of carbs. So oats have a lot of carbs. So I like to put my protein powder in with my with my oats in the morning so that it kind of slows down that digestion and I'm also getting a healthy serving of my protein. Okay, I like a full scoop of protein in each of my uh, servings of breakfast. You're welcome to, to change that to your preference if you want just half a cup or a half a scoop, what, whatever's gonna work for you, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and start putting a full scoop of protein powder. And hopefully you have one that you like. I found this one is super yummy. So I love, I love enjoying it with my oats. It flavors it up really, really nicely. Okay. So one of the things that I found that I love to add to my chocolate uh, uh, proats, I guess is what we're calling them is I like to add a scoop of espresso powder, okay? That's how I feel like it takes the chocolate into that mocha flavor, okay? It kind of deepens down the chocolate, gives me that little shot of caffeine that I might need in the morning. Um, and just really honestly, I think kind of deepens the flavor of the chocolate and makes it really super, super yummy. So that's what I add. And my chocolate protein powder is sweet enough and the bananas add enough sweetness that I don't feel like I need to add any more sweetener to this. I, I, I limit the sweetener that I use on a regular basis. And I don't feel like this needs any, if you like things to be super sweet, you can always do it this way and add some sweetener at the time that you eat it. If you feel like it's not sweet enough for you. Okay. Um, so I added about a tablespoon of espresso into each. Now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add two tablespoons of chia seeds. Okay. Chia seeds are a great thickener. Um, they will kind of help to thicken up um, some of the liquid that goes into these uh, these jars. Um, and they're also good. They have they have lots of nutrients in them and can kind of help you to feel full. Okay. So chia seeds are our good little thickener that we have going on there. Okay. So oats again are another thing that are on a <laughs> They're, they're customizable. I'll tell you how much I, I like to do about half a cup of oats, maybe a little bit less. Okay. 
And I have found that I really like the large flake oats, not the instant or like the one minute. I like the big kind of chunky ones. They stay a little bit chewier, I think. They give a little bit more texture to your overnight oats. Um, things don't kind of get as mushy, if that makes sense. Uh, they kind of have a little bit of tooth to what, them. What are you adding? This is the oats. And how much are you adding? I am adding all just under half a cup. Okay. Okay. My, my measure is about a quarter of a cup. And I usually do about like one and a half, maybe a little bit more than a half. Okay. Into each of my jars. Okay. Okay. I'm sorry. All right. Never mind. I feel, never mind. Like, I feel like I'm talking and I'm, <laughs> I'm not sure that I'm adding the right amount of ingredients into each jar. <laughs> Okay, now I like the bananas in my chocolate. Uh, another thing that I've done before is I've done strawberry slices. I think strawberries and chocolate go really nicely together. Uh, so that's a variation you might want to give a try at some point. Okay, my egg bites appear to be done. Are anyone else's done? I'm going to take mine out and just set them on the side here. And I'm going to go yep, ahead and turn my oven off. My oven, we will not... Uh, well, unless you're going to cook your, your chicken, I have an air fryer that I'm going to use to cook my chicken or salmon. I'm going to cook it in there. But if you are still using the oven, let's go ahead and turn it up to 400 now once you get your egg bites out. Okay. Um, a knife. Is anyone's water boiling yet for their quinoa? Are you keeping an eye on that one as well? Yeah, mine's boiling. Yeah, mine is. Okay. Okay. Did you throw your quinoa in yet? Yes. I said the time. Okay. 15 minutes, it says in the package. Oh, perfect. 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 Okay. I'm just going to go ahead. My, my water is just finally boiling. So I'm going to throw mine in as well and set my timer. I'm going to turn it down and set the timer for that. Oh, timer. my timer says 15 minutes. I'm going to set that for 15 minutes. Okay, so I'm coming back to the bananas for the oats. I like to put just about a half a banana in each of my cups. Okay, so I usually will just cut it in half and then slice it lengthwise and then just kind of slice right into each of the jars. I'm not too specific about it. I'm just kind of trying to get it in and done. Egg bites are done. Awesome. Take them out and you can just set them on the top of the stove yeah. uh, and let them cool a little bit before we pop them out of the containers. Yes. Okay, someone was asking me this week about um, the, the, the parfaits that I do with the Greek yogurt when I use bananas. So I use bananas quite a bit. And as long as the air doesn't get at our bananas, uh, once we kind of have them in our, our containers all prepped and ready to use. So like in my parfaits, I'll just make sure to seal over top of them with, with yogurt side to side. And here, like in our in our oats, as long as they're covered with liquid, they shouldn't turn brown. Okay. So they'll they they should they should be nice and and still kind of appetizing looking <laughs> as the week progresses. I haven't had any problem with that. Because again, nobody wants to eat brown wilted looking bananas. Okay, for the oats, I know some people like um, to add almond milk or a, a milk substitute. Um, I, I prefer to use just water. Again, my protein powder is, is really yummy and very creamy tasting. And so I find the water is all that I need and there's no extra calories and it's cheap. I always have it on hand. I don't have to run out of my almond milk. Okay, so I'm looking to add probably about half to three quarters of a cup. And I'm just gonna fill that and eyeball it 
fill it up with the liquid and then I'm going to put my lids on and give those a really good shape. Okay. Anybody else shaking yet? How much water did, did you say? Mine's about half to three quarters of a cup. Okay, again, it's gonna depend on the oats that you're using. Um, and if you uh, use a full cup of the protein powder, you don't want it to be super, super, super watery, but it, again, it, it's, it's all how you like the consistency of you when you eat it as well. Okay. It's going to thicken up overnight. So you want it to be a little bit watery, but you don't want, I, I don't like mine to be super, super soupy in the morning. I would prefer it be a little bit thicker. Okay. So that's how full my jars are. Can you see? how full they are with all the ingredients in the liquid. So I would say that that liquid is probably about three quarters of a cup, maybe a little bit less than that. Okay, and then those go into the fridge after they're all shaken up. And those can be eaten cold. I know a lot of people really like them cold, but they also can be heated. Okay, you can throw them in the microwave, watch that they don't kind of bubble over the top, but uh, those can be heated and enjoyed that way as well. Okay, so is everybody's workspace still clean and usable? Hopefully. Is anyone still cooking their egg bites? Or is everybody's done? Because I'm probably gonna pop mine out now and put them into the container to cool off a little bit. Okay, because they they seem um, to be ready. Sorry? We're done the uh, egg bites. You're all done? Yeah. Awesome. Okay, guys, one of the things, remember, that I asked about, I'm hoping that you guys will take pictures of the things that you've created. I don't know if you can see, but I feel like those egg bites turned out super pretty. Okay, there's a little bit of, like, the, the red, roasted red pepper. You can see a little bit of the kale the crack, cracked ground pepper on the top. So to me, those look super appetizing. And I have to just like rave. I will, I will admit, I went out and bought my silicone tray today because I know that I wanted one that they make the egg bites coming out so much easier. <laughs> um, I, I've been using my metal ones for a little while now and I'm like, I've been wanting to splurge. So I felt like today was a good, a good day to splurge. Uh, on getting the silicone tray and I'm super glad that I did. So those egg bites are done. I'm just going to leave them to cool in here a little bit more before I throw them into the fridge, but they're all done and they're packed in that container. Um, you can pack things in Ziploc baggies if you want them to be easier to kind of pack up to work. If you're planning on taking these to work, you can put them in little Ziploc bags in the numbers that you think you'll eat them in um, and, you know, just kind of store them in the fridge that way. That's That's an easy thing to do as well. Okay. Okay. How's everybody feeling? We're going to get ready to kind of move, move on. To some of our nets. So again, I'm going to take that moistened paper towel and put it under my fresh cutting board and I'm going to grab a fresh knife because we're going to get ready to move on to do our salads and our uh, quinoa bowls. I need an update on how everybody's doing before we decide to move on though. Where are we at? I need a minute to add the milk to the oatmeal. Okay, perfect. It wasn't enough, I'm adding a quarter more. Okay. I am We're just ready. taking my egg bites out of the muffin tin. Perfect. Then I'm perfect. ready. Perfect, awesome. Okay, I'm gonna start assembling the, the, the ingredients on the counter so that I can show you guys uh, but you guys just keep going ahead, okay? Everybody's doing super great. We're like an hour in, 
and you've already done like so much. So I hope you're all feeling like super proud of yourself. Things are like perfectly on track. So we're doing just really, really, really great. Um, and we're going to be able to kind of move on to the next step really shortly here. So I'm going to start to gather up those things. Um, and then I can just hopefully have you grab the same. <laughs> Need a can opener for that one. Okay, so we are going to kind of turn our counters into a huge mess right now as we grab everything because everything's kind of coming out to finish off the rest of our, our preps. So I've grabbed my containers. So uh, I'm going to show you, I will try to find a link uh, to share because I found some prep containers that I just love. And I'm going to tell you about them while you guys finish up. I'm going to tell you about them, um, why I love them. Okay, so I found these bowls for my salads. I love a big hearty salad. I love to eat large quantities, even if it's locale. I love these containers because um, once you fill them up, the dome shape of the, the top of it allows you to shake everything together. When you get go to eat it, you know how you wanna be able to mix everything together. And if it has a flat lid and you filled it like right to the top, <laughs> then there's no room to shake everything. And so I like that it has that dome lid. It also comes with these little containers for salad dressing that snapped right into the top of that dome lid. Is this genius? I, I raved about this to perfect strangers when I found this. <laughs> I am such a nerd, but this is the perfect salad container. So I'm going to try and find a link to share that with you guys because I just love those and I've tried a lot of different things. So um, I have those. Then for my quinoa bowls, um, one of the reasons that I chose what I chose here um, as far as meal prep wise was because I feel like these two things can kind of go together. So I feel like I can eat an Asian salad all on its own or in a smaller serving of quinoa with salmon on it, which I can put in this container. I can put those together if I want a big hearty meal or I can eat one or the other just individually. So when you're meal prepping, I hope that doesn't feel boring and repetitive to you guys. But to me, I like the mix and matchability of that. So if I'm really, really hungry, I can have a big hearty meal 
I did the Asian salad and I told you guys to get some cans of tuna as well because the can of tuna can be added to the Asian salad as a really quick and easy way to add protein to just a salad. So it's a lean source of protein. All you got to do is open it up and drain it and you have some protein that you can add to this salad. Okay, so what ingredients we're going to grab now is basically everything else that we talked about. Okay, so we had the can of baby corn, we have the water chestnuts that were sliced, we have the orange segments in the jar, we have the pickled ginger, we have the frozen shelled edamame, the mini cucumbers, we have the radishes, the cilantro, the carrots, and the kale. I think that's it. Oh, and the dressing. Okay, I think that's everything. So if you guys want to go ahead and start grabbing that, keep an eye on your quinoa. I don't know about you guys, but mine's looking like it's just about done. Okay, my little tip with the quinoa is I usually turn it off a couple minutes early and we'll just leave it on the stove to absorb the rest of the moisture without burning. Okay, so I'm about two minutes out. So I'm going to go ahead and turn that off um, so that it doesn't burn while I'm talking to you guys and get distracted. Um but yeah, we are going to go ahead and get started when everybody has their ingredients. So let me know when you guys are ready. Did I also say to grab your marinating meat? We're going to throw that in to get that start cooking first before we do anything else. Okay. Okay, so while you guys are gathering your stuff, I'm going to give you a little tip of what I do with my egg bites. Okay, I like them just regular, but I also like to throw them in a wrap. Okay, it, when I'm kind of looking for just a meal that I can take in my hand as I'm running out the door. So I found these protein wraps that have about 140 calories and 13 grams of protein. So I'll throw two egg bites in here, throw the a whole thing in the microwave, give it about 30 seconds, 45 seconds in the microwave, then wrap it all up and it's good to go. And I can just wrap it and take it out the door with me. Okay, so that's one of the ways that I really like to eat those egg bites. They're also really good if you just want to do a quick little piece of toast um, and throw them on a piece of toast. Um, they also work really well if you have some, uh, calories that you want to use with some, uh, spend some fat on, uh, they're really good with a smear of avocado in that wrap before you put the egg bites in and then just wrap it all together. And it's, it's super yummy as well. So mine are cool enough that I'm going to throw them into the fridge. And then I'm going to, like I said, uh, if you don't have an air fryer, please just grab a baking dish. You can line it with parchment if you want, or you can just spray it with Pam. And we're going to cook those little marinated meat bites, protein bites, whatever you did, your salmon or your chicken. So my um, air fryer is actually two pieces. Okay. So it has kind of the basket. I'm not sure if they're all like this. Mine is a basket and then it kind of has the bottom. So I will pour the whole thing, marinate and all into this. The marinade will kind of cook on the bottom. So afterwards I can spoon it over the bites in my bowls, kind of like a sauce. So none of it's actually going to waste. So I'm able to use all of that marinade. So if you wanna you do a baking dish with yours, pour all of your, your marinade and everything into that baking dish to cook, okay? So I'm just gonna pour that all into my air fryer and I'm gonna go ahead and get that started. I hope it's not too noisy once I start it up. If it is, I'll have to turn it off and cook it later. You guys can let me know. Okay, I'm just gonna throw that in the garbage. The Ziploc bag, going to give those an even spread. I'm just going to close that up into my, into my air fryer. And then I'm going to plug it in. How about that? How long did you put that in? It's, it's actually just all automated. So it's going to give me about 20 minutes. I like them to be quite crispy. So I will usually cook it 
And then I find that air fryer doesn't really dry things out the same way an oven does. So I'll cook it and then I'll like toss it so that I can kind of get those like crispy bits so like on all of it. 20 minutes at 350 or 400 in the yeah, air fryer? I think it's in the air fryer. It's at 360 is what it's at. Yeah, it's just kind of a preset for chicken. I just kind of push the button and that's what it says. Okay, so while that chicken is cooking, we are going to go ahead and get started on those bowls and salads. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to set all of my containers out. Um, I am going to make five salads and I'm going to make five little quinoa bowls as well. Okay, and I'm going to keep my quinoa bowls pretty, uh, pretty neutral uh, because I plan on probably eating them with the salad. So most of the toppings, all of these toppings work well on the salad as well as on the quinoa bowls. They're quite interchangeable. So we have edamame, we have radishes, we have red onions, we have carrot, pickle ginger. So all of those don't have to go on the salad. You can save some and put some on the, on the quinoa bowls. We're going to divide those amongst and they'll work in any variation. You're welcome to use all on whatever it is that you do. One little tip about the cucumbers. Okay, cucumbers out of everything that we've chosen here are probably the one thing that will go mushy we first. Lost you. Okay. I can't hear you. Sorry. You can't hear Can me. Anybody else hear her? It's me. Go ahead. Sorry. The fridge and it's like mushy goo okay so the, the the mini ones will last so if you don't want to cut them ahead of time and you're really nervous about how long they're going to keep just put one in the morning of quickly slice it quickly dice it throw it on top and and you'll have it in the morning of okay so that's a little tip everything else should be able to be kept for a full week okay um the reason I suggested that we do kale is because kale is a little bit more robust and it lasts a little bit longer than a lot of lettuces will. I find uh, kale um, and arugula are probably my best longer lasting options. Things like romaine lettuce isn't too bad either. Things like spinach and iceberg lettuce I find don't last or seem as appealing in the fridge after a couple of days of being in my dish. So for me, the kale is a really good thing. It doesn't go soggy. It doesn't kind of brown on the edges, like, you know, like an iceberg lettuce will kind of brown on the edges of even a romaine will. I find spinach goes really watery and, and, and mushy quite easily. The kale should last you really well. So I'm just go ahead and take a huge handful of, of, of this. Again, I like a large salad. Um, so I am just going to fill my bowls with a good, healthy serving of the kale because I want a big salad and I know that I'm going to eat it all. Okay. For those of you in Canada, I find this at Safeway. It, it's a huge bag. Oh, that's another thing, guys. Like, I don't know about you, but a whole head of lettuce is sometimes, it's been crazy expensive lately that I actually find that the bag Sometimes it might be a little bit more cost effective. This entire bag of kale, which has made huge, five huge salads here, and there's probably enough to do three, three or four more. Um, this was $5.99 at Safeway, which I think a package of lettuce, I mean, we're looking at a head of lettuce is probably being <laughs> six or seven dollars these days. So this was actually a really good deal and it lasts really well in the fridge. Okay, so think about some of those bagged options, uh, but just also be careful about what you're buying and how long it's actually going to last. Okay. So from here, if you guys want to go ahead and open your cans, okay, let's open and drain our cans. I love stuff that comes in a can that's already chopped and ready for me because it's super quick and easy on meal prep day. I just have to open the can and drain it. Okay, the oranges, you could do fresh mandarin oranges if you wanted to take the time to sit and peel them and cut them. Um, but to me, it's just as easy to get them in a can. I drain off the, the, the juice, which is often pretty sugary. Um, but once I've drained it off, I don't really feel like I'm that, that bad off uh, by using something that comes right out of the can. Okay, so I'm opening up my baby corn. 
my mandarin oranges and my water chest sliced water chestnuts okay and i'm just gonna drain those for all of you moms out there if you don't have mandarin oranges you might or you might want to buy the lunchable packages so that your kids can enjoy some as well. I've been known to steal those little the little lunch packets for, of the mandarin oranges and and use those because they're just the same. Okay. So one of the things that I like to do, and this is purely just preference. Again, I was talking to you guys about how I like my meals to look really pretty. Um. Michael, I'm wondering if you want to switch the view back to to be able to see the dishes on the counter when you get a chance. That would be awesome. Okay, so I do this little trick. It makes it look pretty, but I think it also kind of helps things to last uh, because they're not all mixed in with the lettuce. So you've all probably seen my prep pictures, and I do little clumps of ingredients in my bowls. So right now I'm taking the corn. Out. And I'm just kind of making it into a little clump in one part of the bowl. Okay. I feel like they do this, like when you're, when you're somewhere and you're buying like a really fancy looking salad, that's all pre-pepped and you can see all the ingredients on the top. They're kind of like in little clumps. They're not all mixed together and you don't really know what's hiding in there. So this one makes the, the, the ingredients all very apparent, uh, makes it look really appealing. And uh, I, I think it just helps it to last throughout the week as well. Okay. So I'm going to start with those ingredients that we just opened, the corn. I love water chestnuts for crunch. I don't know if you guys like them. Any of this stuff, if you're not a fan of, you don't have to put it in. Um, it To me, it's just unique ways to kind of get Asian flavors into a salad and kind of offer up some different textures as well. Okay. Nobody likes to eat a boring salad with tomatoes and cucumbers every single day of the week for the rest of their life okay we want to have some variety and some options and so i feel like this kind of gives some uh, uh some flavor options just as a little side note another way that i like to eat these asian salads is sometimes i'll cook up some pot stickers do you guys know pot stickers like asian pot stickers um and throw a couple of those in on top of my Asian salad. It's super, super, super yummy. Uh, and makes you kind of feel like you're you're eating definitely when really it's just kind of a salad with a nice hot pot sticker on the top. And those can just be purchased frozen at most grocery stores and just cooked up in a pan. They're super quick and easy. And your family can eat large quantities of the pot stickers while you eat just a couple on your salad if you want, if you're trying to, to be a little bit more health conscious. Okay. So I have my oranges, my corn, and my bait and my water chestnuts on my my container there already. Okay, so next I'm going to take. Uh, I just have a big jumbo carrot. If you have little ones, you're welcome to use those as well. I like to shred my carrots. Um. If I can find my grater, hmm. oh, there it is. Okay, so I'm just gonna take that carrot and just quickly grate it down. Again, I feel like it's just kind of nice to have different textures and colors in your bowl and I kind of like the texture and look of the grated carrots. Okay. So that's probably enough for me. Okay, so again, I'm just gonna take a little clump and pile that next to some of the other ingredients that I have going on in there. Are you guys looking pretty? Are they coming along? How are you feeling?
Okay, so now I'm gonna add some of that frozen edamame. This is another way to get a little bit of protein, more protein into your salad. Don't worry that they're frozen. They thaw nicely and they don't add a lot of moisture to the bowl. So it's not really going to change uh, the consistency of what's going on in here. Okay. Uh, next, I'm going to add just a little bit of red onion. I like just a little bit of onion in my salads. I'm just going to dice this down really, really nice and fine. So does everybody have their egg bites out and their quinoa cooked? We don't want to forget about those things while we're prepping these salads. Everybody good? So I'm just checking in on my chicken here and I'm going to give it a stir. It's definitely not cooked, but I'm just going to move things around a little bit. And then start that back up again. Okay, how's everybody coming? It's pretty quiet out there. Good, are you mean to put the cilantro on there too? Was that for the gin? Uh, yep. Yeah, yeah, the cilantro can go on there. I'll probably sprinkle a little cilantro on the the uh, uh, the salmon bolt bites as well in the quinoa bowls just for a little bit of color on that. But yeah, I'm going to put all of my toppings, I think I said this already, on my salad. Um, and then I'm just going to do quinoa, the salad, or the salmon bites, and some cilantro on my quinoa bowls. Okay, but you're welcome to change that up. Any of these toppings will go good on the salmon bowls. Okay, so I'm, I'm slicing some radishes just really nice and finely now. Okay, they add nice color, kind of a nice crunch. A little bit of something a little bit different. Okay, so we're just going to throw those in as we go. Does anyone else here love pickled ginger as much as I do? <laughs> because I am going to put a healthy dose Yay! of pickled ginger in <laughs> these as well. Okay, to me, there's nothing yummier in a salad. The cilantro and the pickled ginger are two of my favorites. Okay, they could probably be the bulk of, of what's going in here. Um, but I just find they're such a distinctive flavor and they just really kind of bring this whole thing alive. Okay. But again, if that's not your thing, you do not have to add those. Okay. Here go the radishes. I am going to go ahead and put my cucumbers in here because I know that I'm going to eat these relatively quickly. But like I said, that is that is optional and up to you. 
Let's do a little right there. And don't go too heavy on the onion or your workday will, will be angry at you. But it does add a nice little flavor. Okay, so again, with the pickled ginger, it comes really, really nice and finely sliced, but it's large pieces in the in the jar. So I like to take those out and cut them down into a little bit finer, uh, easier to kind of manage. So I'm, I'm just going to kind of dice those up and put little groupings of that in our salad as well. Okay, so is anybody cooking their meat in the oven? And if so, how is it coming? Have you had a peek at it? Doing good. I've already turned mine. You've you've shuffled it? Okay. Yeah, yep. if you have a convection oven, it will cook relatively quickly. Um, that's actually pretty similar to a, a, an air fryer. Um, if you have a standard oven, it might just take a little bit longer. Yeah, mine are done. Sure. Okay. If they're done, you can just take them out and set them on top of the oven and, and just wait for them. Okay, we'll get to those in just a second. And Arpia Oxen is a hydraulic turbine dust paralyzed device for that. Michael? Yes. Can I ask you to change the 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 yep. counter view to the counter view? Mm -hmm. Please, that would be awesome. Thank you. Oh, there you go. Yeah, I just wanted everybody to kind of have a look. Okay, so this is how the salads are coming together on my end. I'm gonna throw a little bit of, of cilantro on top of there, but like I said, I'm gonna I'm gonna chop a whole bunch of cilantro because some will be going on to the uh, quinoa bowls as well. Was there a question? Somebody was... Oh, sorry, oh, is there a question? Um, I think no. so there's some partner chatter sometimes. Okay, yeah. Sorry, mom came in, I forgot it was an on mute. Oh, that's okay, that's okay. If there's a question though, please just, just speak it. I'm, I'm not sure that, I don't want you to feel like we're missing it, okay? And how does everyone feel about cilantro isn't it like a, it's a love hate thing some people love it and some people don't so if you love it put a lot on here it's going to be a really yummy compliment but if not i understand some people of north african descent taste cilantro as soap yeah i i isn't it a uh a chromosome thing or you no. either have the no. gene or the i i heard it was yeah it's interesting okay so i'm just chopping mine up here some other things that could go really nicely in these bowls but might be um i mean you really could put anything into them that you wanted um you could do like snow pea pods. Those would be a really yummy thing. Avocado pieces would be really good in here, but those wouldn't be able to be added until the time of, okay? I have not, I've yet to find a way to keep avocado from browning. Um, and so I find it's best if you add that the day of, uh, the day that you're eating it. And just kind of like, you know, some really nice ripe cubed pieces would go really nicely in here. Okay, there's also some sriracha mayo out there. I don't know if you guys have something similar. I know that it exists up here. I'm sure you have a similar. That's kind of a nice topper to go uh, on top of these these salmon bite bowls as well. Kind of a spicy mayo just as a, a little condiment. And, and just as a little tip, if you're looking to 
if you're looking to really be careful about how many calories you're adding, whenever I'm using something like that, I'll actually squeeze a portion of it into a Ziploc bag and just cut the very little corner off so that I can drizzle a really fine drizzle on top. Because sometimes when you squeeze it out of the container, it kind of comes out as a big like blop and there's like a ton of calories in that mayo, um, probably a little bit more than you want, okay? I know I talked about my super fancy little containers that I have here. If you don't have a small, um, a, a small uh, container for your dressing, dressing can very easily go into a, a snack size Ziploc bag. Okay, and again, when you're at work or wherever you're at, you can easily just kind of like get the corner off. Sometimes you can just like take it off with your teeth. Okay, and then you can squeeze your dressing out over top um, and just easily kind of get it out of the container. Um, onto the, the the salad that way. Okay, I actually forgot to get enough sesame dressing, so I'm gonna have to fill the rest of my my dressing containers later. But I'll use what I have, and that's what mine look like. So they're going to be ready to go. So if you have your quinoa cooked and your salads are done. I'm going to go ahead and take my containers and divide my quinoa into the bottom of my containers. I need one more. Oh, do you want to see? Okay, that's what my chicken looks like. Can you see the little crispy, crispy bits on there? That's how I like my chicken to be cooked for these. It's just kind of like crispy and blackened on the corners and super kind of yummy. Okay, so I think I cooked way too much quinoa. So I'm probably <laughs> gonna have to store some in my fridge like I was telling you about, but I have no problem with that. Okay, so I'm probably putting about two thirds of a cup of quinoa in each of my containers here. I feel like that's plenty serving size for me. How are those salads coming, everybody? I finished mine. Yay! Are your quinoa bowls put together? No, I just put in the quinoa in there now. Perfect. Um, I tasted the chicken. It is delicious. Chicken oh, good. It's so good. Good, 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 good. good. Oh, I'm so glad. Okay, I'm gonna put the lids on my salads and put them into the fridge so that they're out of the way. I'm gonna get some more dressing another day. How's everyone doing on fridge space? That's another thing that you need to account for in this is making sure that you have space for all these things in your fridge, but hopefully you thought of that. Did you say that the, the cilantro is also going to be for another recipe too? I'm going to put some on top of my, uh, my chicken, uh, my chicken quinoa bowls. So yes, okay. the cilantro can go for that as well. Okay.
Okay. Oh, nothing makes me happier than little crispy bits of protein. <laughs> this looks yummy to me. Okay, so I'm ready to put my chicken on top of my quinoa. Is anybody else to that point yet as well? My chicken needs a few more minutes. Okay. Do you have, are you putting cilantro? We can, we can, we can dice up the cilantro. Yeah, I already while we're the waiting cilantro. for that. Are you putting anything else in there? Uh, not, I'm not going to. Like I said, I think you guys have seen this before. I've done this as full bowls. Okay. It goes really nice with the mandarin oranges, the, the, the baby corn, the water chestnuts, all of that stuff goes really well with this. So I, I intend on mixing mine together at some point um, and having my salad with my, so I, I feel like I can just keep these pretty, pretty basic for now. I wanted to keep the, the grocery list relatively simple this week by not giving you a huge list. Um, I find you know how it goes when you're cooking. I have a lot of staples on hand that I use regularly, but I wasn't sure that I wanted you guys to feel like you had to go out and buy tons of ingredients that you weren't. Like I already had pickled ginger and soy sauce and sriracha and honey. And um, I have all of those things on hand. So it's not a huge uh, thing for me to go out and buy the the complimentary things, the chicken, the um, the fresh the fresh bits. But I didn't want you guys to be overwhelmed by the list of things that needed to be purchased. So I tried to do salads and kind of our main that would have overlap and use the same thing. So I apologize. I hope that's not boring for you guys eating this week. But I just didn't really nope. kind of want you to have like hundreds and hundreds of dollars of groceries and just be like, this is ridiculous. <laughs> I'm so. a fan. Of Good. Well, I, I hope that I hope this works. And uh, another thing that I like to do, um, some people struggle with eating the same thing for, for a full week. For me, I have enough variety. I can eat eggs for lunch. I can eat eggs for breakfast. I can eat eggs for dinner. So my egg bites work any time of day. I don't mind eating oats for lunch or for breakfast. So I feel like I mix and match things, but sometimes it's, it's nice to be able to freeze a couple of the dishes that we do as well. So the fact that we're just doing quinoa and our, our salmon or our chicken in this bowl, that actually allows that to then be frozen. So you could have three portions that you eat this week. You could freeze two of those portions. And then next week, you could eat two of the portions that you prep of something different and two of the portions that you pull from the freezer. So you can quickly see how if you're meal prepping every single week, you can start to get a lot of variety if you make things that are able to be frozen. Like last week, I made a white chicken chili um, that would freeze really, really nicely. Okay. So I can, I can create variety for myself by freezing a couple of portions each week. Um, and then, you know, just doing my fresh salads and, and pulling a, a frozen portion out of the freezer and kind of mixing those around. So if, if you worry about the boredom of food prep, that is one way to kind of quickly get over that. And you'll find that, I don't know, in most of our lives, I think we're, we're eating, very similar things on rotation week to week anyway. I don't think a lot of us are reinventing the wheel every single week. There is a lot of repetition, um, but you know, we can, we can help to, to alleviate some of that by doing some of that like freezing. So this is, these are the portions that I have. It seems to worked out just well. I have five, five portions. I'm going to spoon some of the sauce over top of the, um, of that and then I'm going to sprinkle it with some of the, the cilantro so that it looks really nice but then I am pretty much ready to go on those okay so the sauce goes nicely kind of adds some flavor to that quinoa um will will be really nice moisture over top of the salad I like hot, hot some hot moisture over top of my salad it kind of makes things kind of wilt down a little bit and I enjoy kind of eating it that way so that's kind of how I will do that. My air fryer goes nicely into my dishwasher. I don't know about you guys, but that's one of the things that I love about mine. And I'm just going to sprinkle some cilantro on top here. So that it looks really nice and pretty. There we go. OK, 
Okay. So how are you guys feeling? You feeling like you got a handle on everything? I'm going to grab my cheesecakes and bring them back in from outside. Okay, so my cheesecakes are nice and cooled down. Okay, so I just was messing around with a, a recipe or a topper for this pumpkin spice cheesecake. So I apologize because I did not share the ingredients of it in the newsletter that I sent out, but I am going to tell you what I do with it. And you're welcome to, to do this another time or, or think about adding it or, or not. Okay. So it's kind of nice to put a little topper on these. Sometimes I've just sprinkled it with like a dash of the pumpkin pie spice. That's an option. You could chop some pecans for a little bit of crunch and also add that this, all of these things can be used individually or they can be compounded and used all together. So the last time I made this, I actually made a little topper out of some brown sugar Splenda, the pumpkin pie spice and some toasted coconut that I had on hand. Okay. So I just ended up mixing those all together. And so for these eight little ones, I'm probably going to do uh, two tablespoons of the toasted coconut. I'll probably do a uh, one teaspoon of the, the pumpkin pie spice. And then probably about two tablespoons of the, the brown sugar Splenda. But I'll, and I'm just gonna stir that all together. Um, and then I just kind of crumble it over top of the, what am I looking for? I feel like I'm lost. I feel like it adds a little bit of sweetness and a little bit of texture to the to the the, the cheesecake, which should be nice and moist, but it's kind of nice to have a little bit of that texture going on. Okay, I'm just gonna mix that all up. How's everybody coming? Have you wrapped? Wrapped your bowls, your salads. Okay, so there is what that topping kind of looks like when it's all made. And it has some little coconut, some little bits of that brown sugar Splenda, and then that nutmeg spice, or not nutmeg spice, pumpkin pie spice. Um, I'm trying to break, make sure that all those little clumps of Splenda, and then I'm just going to take that. And I'm just going to sprinkle it on top, just kind of like this. And then I'm going to cover those over and put those into the fridge. Okay. Like I said, your cheesecakes are best to be completely cooled before you before you eat them, okay? It helps the consistency to kind of dance up a little bit and become a little bit more moist. Okay, so I will save some of that for later. Okay, so did anyone else have a little taste of anything that they feel like is super yummy? Did anyone else dive into the chicken? The chicken is delicious. <laughs> You're happy with that? 
How did the salads turn out? Are you guys happy with how they looked and how they came together? Yeah. My pumpkin is with... not pretty, but it tastes delicious. Your cheesecake? It, yes, it's not pretty, but it, it tastes delicious. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> I, I Why make, do you think it's not pretty? Did well, it rise I, I up made, funny? I, I didn't have individual containers, so I made it just like in an eight by eight square pan and then like oh. tried to cut it into squares and it just, yeah. I made it in a okay. pie pan. It's not very pretty true, that way either. True confession good. time. The reason I love individual containers is because I'm a little bit OCD <laughs> and I hate when I cut something and it's not like evenly square. <laughs> so I get what you're saying about it not looking super pretty when it comes out of a pan and you have to like cut it up and stuff, but I'm glad it tastes good. That's, that's important, right? <laughs> and it, it's hard to know what containers you were going to need beforehand. So if it's something that you can envision yourself making many times, it's worth getting what I actually like to use for those when I'm not using these little disposable ones are these little Pyrex. Oh, where are we? I'm on this camera. Okay. These little Pyrex dishes. I have no idea. They're probably about a cup and a half size. Okay. And I will usually make it with that same recipe that I gave you today with the two cups of cottage cheese, two eggs, two protein, the, the one that we use today, I will get five. Of, of this size container okay so that's that's a nice one to kind of like if you're looking to invest in some containers those those cook up really really nicely and kind of give you that individual and I think they actually even come with plastic lids so that you can use a reusable lid on them as well so those might be a good thing to, to kind of keep your eye out for if you're if you're looking to make that I do plan to make a lot more different flavors of cheesecake as we go um, I do a, a vanilla one is really yummy. That would be without the pu the pumpkin pie slice and the pumpkin. Um, it's really good topped with some fruit. You can do a chocolate peanut butter one with chocolate and then just a little bit of peanut butter blended into it as well, or even a PB2. Um, so there's lots of different ways to kind of mix up that cheesecake um, and get your protein in, you know, with feeling like you're eating dessert for, for breakfast or whenever it is that you're planning to eat those. So does anyone have any questions? We are kind of at the end of our prep. Um, and I'm just wondering if there's any questions that anyone has before we kind of let you guys go on with your night. It, I, I was hoping to stay under two hours. I was hoping we would have been a little bit closer to an hour and a half, but sorry, it looks like it took us about an hour and 45 minutes, but I hope that you're feeling like it was worth the time to kind of have your whole fridge full of stuff that you can enjoy that's super healthy for you this week. So hopefully it was time well spent um, and you feel like you went away with, with kind of some good ideas and some good tips and some yummy stuff to eat. So any questions before we kind of wrap things up? I just want to say thank you. I'm like so excited to try all this. My, I'm not really entirely sure my whole family's on board with the healthy when, when I was making it. But it, I think it tastes really good. I was tasting it along the way, so I'm super excited. Are you going to send us, like, the recipes that we did? Because I didn't write it down as we went, sure. and I would do it again. I would be happy to do that. I would have, be happy to do that. So that, that's great feedback. Are that there other be... questions? Yeah. Oh, sorry, Julie. Uh, no, thank you. That would be so good if I had the recipes. Thank you so much. Okay. Was there anything else? I any other questions question. from anyone? Sure. Uh, on the eggs, do, do they freeze well or no? You know what? I actually haven't frozen my I egg bites. My egg bites I usually all the time. eat them. You do them frozen? All the time. I make a dozen and I, I don't like to eat it every day. So I eat six and I freeze six. I freeze them like in snack size bags, two at a time. Perfect. And, and they're Love that. Get them a month later. Okay. Thank That's you. That's great I feedback. That That's awesome. Yeah. I have seen them in the freezer section of like the grocery store. I actually just saw them yesterday and they were charging like a ton of money for them. I was super surprised, but so if you put like parchment paper in the air fryer and put two in for eight minutes from frozen, then yeah, love that. I do that. Often. Love that. <laughs> Perfect. Any other tips or questions that anyone might have? I would say like next time, maybe put the recipes out before. So you know what goes with what, because it was a little chaotic oh, okay. for me because I'm like yeah. already like over the place. Yeah, I was going to say the same feedback. thing. I, I, copied the, I copied the image. I extracted the text and put that into a note so that when I went to the 
store. I had it in text form, but maybe uh -huh. maybe we'll work on that and uh, have it like downloadable so people can download a shopping list. Perfect. The shopping list and the, the recipes. That's awesome. That's awesome. I do actually plan on building on this idea. I would love to be, do it again with different ideas, different recipes. Um, so uh, I will keep you guys posted. Um, but yes, I, I am going to put together a form, uh, a Google Doc or a Google form. If you guys would, would give me some written feedback, if you can kind of think about as you kind of go through, you know, think about things that could could help me to improve on this. Because I, I love the idea, but I want it to be what people uh people need from it so i want to know you know how it can be improved what you really liked uh maybe why you were you were inclined to to want to take it in the first place um so so yeah so i will i will get that out to you but i want to thank you guys so much for supporting me in this like harebrained idea <laughs> it was actually really nice to have people in my space so i do this every week you know i do it every week and i'm usually just by myself i usually have the tv going i i always have my my drink of whatever to make it feel enjoyable but it's much nicer to have people <laughs> in my space doing this with me as well so i hope everything turns out really really yummy uh, and again i'll send out i'll email out that 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 uh that form to just kind of get some feedback from you guys but i would really appreciate that, that I took awesome. pictures of everything do you want them posted on the facebook page or just email to you if if you want to post them on the facebook page that would be great yeah. if you want to send them to me um I might just take them from the Facebook page. I would yeah. love to use them and share them on my Instagram if that's okay. okay. And just yeah. let I'll people know that this happened good. and this is what people did. And uh, yeah, and then I'll probably, if I, I might share some uh, some of the feedback from your forms 